Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? Winning Cures Everything. This is the Power 3. I think we'll call it the Power 3. It's the Big Ten, and then the ACC, and the SEC will close things out. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Today, we're discussing the Big Ten West. It's a, Listen to this sweet music. That's what I'm talking about. We're rock and rolling. You know whose band that is? If I had to guess, I would guess Alabama. That is not correct. Memphis. That would be Willie Taggart's Florida State Seminoles. <laughs> oh. But this is from way back when, when Jimbo was still around, when the band was proud to be playing. <sighs> but we won't discuss that today. Uh, the show brought to you by... This is going to be real nice to have back. That's right. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. Go check them out for yourself over at tunicatravel.com. Whew, it's nice to have that back, right? I know. You know, know what that means? We never got rid of the banner. We love them. That means it's football season. That's right. We that's, love Tunica. That's what it means. They have, uh, they've got some absolutely incredible stuff going on down there. You can find more information at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us. At winningcureseverything.com. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter. Please, please hit subscribe on YouTube. Hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google Podcast, whatever it is. More specifically, Apple Podcasts. Hit that subscribe button. Press uh, the review button or whatever. Leave us a nice review. Share the show out with your buddies. Tell everybody about it. Bring some more people in. It is football season, damn it. It's time to get rocking and rolling. Today, the Big Ten West. You ready to fire in? Come on. We're talking Lovey Smith's bunch first. The Illinois fly, uh, <laughs> flighting. The Illinois fighting Illini. Flighting might be Ooh, yeah. a nicer word. Four and a eight. Word, but. Yeah, four and eight last year. Uh, two and seven in conference. Six returning starters on offense, nine on defense. The number 31 most experienced team in. In the country, as far as experience returning, number four in the conference, head coach Levy Smith, nine and twenty-seven in three years. He has improved the team, but they are still not very good. Um, four out of five offensive linemen back. Running back Reggie Corbin is back. He uh, he averaged eight point five yards per carry last year. Pretty crazy, right? Correct. Um, but the question is, like, who plays quarterback? Uh, MJ Rivers the second. I mean. I don't know what to do. They uh, they had a number 12 rushing offense, but the number 63 total offense in the country last year to go along with the number 128 total defense, the number 124 scoring defense. So Lovey has decided he's taking over as defensive coordinator. Uh, defensive end Bobby Roundtree had 12 and a half tackles for loss last year, seven and a half sacks. He is an absolute monster. Non-conference games, uh, that's going to give him a shot to improve from four wins last year. However, I'm not really seeing it. Uh, The over-under is four, and it's minus 110 on both sides. Tell me what you've got them at. I've got them four and eight. I think they beat the teams they're supposed to beat. I think they lose to everybody else. I really, really wanted to give them a bump after I saw Who are the teams that they are supposed to beat? Well, I mean... See, that's the question that I run into, right? UConn and Rucker, I think those are given, right? In Akron, I guess. In Akron. Eastern Michigan, it's a home game. That's where I've got the loss. I'm got, <laughs> I've got them three and nine. So here's here's the bump I gave them. And I kind of want to give them a more bump, a bigger bump, I guess. When I saw Lovey Smith's beard at media day, <laughs> I thought, that's a coach. He uh, That's a coach. He and looks I, legit, doesn't and he? And then I realized, oh, no, that's that's Lovey. Oh, no, that's, that's not he. It, it looks... Uh, I think it looks fantastic. It by looks the way. great. It does look almost <laughs> like cartoonish in a way. Um, I, I think it. I think it's but splendid. it does. It does look really good. He looks very uh, elegant, right? So it's the problem with Lubby is not that he can't coach. This guy was an NFL coach. He took a team to a Super Bowl. It said he just doesn't care. I. I, I mean, you might be like, right. Doesn't he live like two or three hours away from school and like? 
yeah. comes back and forth every now and then. Like he's not there. He, he There's treats, no other coach in the country that can do this. He treats this more as a part time job. I wouldn't say part time, but like as an NFL job. He's there during the season, and then like not when it's not right. Like it, it, he still treats it like an NFL job. Mm. And I don't know that you can do that. Now I wonder if that I think, has I think changed. there are lift drivers that that work more than him. I, I wonder I if might be wrong of, on that. I wonder if all of this has changed because of him taking over as defensive coordinator this year. Okay, true. Now, if he's actually going to do that, then he's got to be there more. Yeah. D- but that's do I mean, we that's see thing, any right? other wins on his record because of that though? No, I mean this schedule is pretty brutal. They they've got Nebraska at home. They've got uh, at Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin at home. At Purdue, Rutgers at home, we of course said is a win, but then you got at Michigan State, at Iowa, and then Northwestern. I mean, I just don't see a W anywhere where they're not supposed to go. I'm, I'm giving them the Eastern Michigan, you're not, and it wouldn't surprise me if I'm wrong there. Yeah. I would be a hundred times more surprised if they win any of these other games. Yeah, I think I think you might be right. Than I would if they lose that game. I think you might right. be right. All right. Spend a lot of time on a bad team. Next up, Iowa Hawkeyes. Nine and four last year, five and four in conference. Returning starters, they got five on offense, four on defense. The number 90 most experienced team in the country, which is not good. Number eight in the conference, so somewhere right around the middle. Kirk Ferentz, 152 and 101 in 20 seasons at Iowa. He just keeps on keeping on. Uh, he surpassed Hayden Fry as the program's all time winning as coach last year. Quarterback Nate Stanley. 52 touchdowns over the last two years. That is a school record. He is back, but tight ends uh, Hawkinson and uh, sorry Hawkinson and Noah Fant are not. They had 27 of those touchdowns, by the way. Three offensive linemen are back. That's always a good thing, especially with the kind of offense that Ference likes to run. Defensive end AJ Epineza. Now I remember watching him last year, and he's a beast. He led the Big Ten in sacks, like 10 and a half sacks last year. Number seven total defense. They are losing safety uh, Amari Hooker. Uh, lost a lot of stars, but they've got experienced talent, so that's always good. Schedule might keep them from winning the division. Look, I think Iowa just is what they are, right? Like they, what they've always been. Their over under is seven and a half. The over is minus 155. The under is plus 135. So. Vegas thinks more likely to hit eight than seven or six. And I'm agreeing with them. Uh, I like Iowa. I think Nate Stanley takes another step forward this year. I agree with that. I've got him at nine and three. Holy crap. Yeah. I got him nine and three, too. Give a little props to a guy we went to high school with. Uh, Believe our that. friend. I, I use the word friend loosely. He probably doesn't know I'm alive. Kelvin Bell, the new defensive line coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Played there, went to college, played football there, blew yep. his knees out, has uh, been on staff ever since. Um, just working his way up, doing his thing, and and I got him nine and three, and I'm going to be rooting for the Iowa Hawkeyes this year. Uh, just just hoping to support him. You like my? Want to see him doing what? You like my Iowa shirt that I've had for? Yeah, yeah. A little while I got it last season because they made me so much money against the spread you, early you did, last you year. You did well. You did well with them. So, As I got that shirt and then they started losing. I was not happy about that. Got them nine and three, and uh, and I'm excited. I've to got watch them seven them and two in the conference. I think they could actually win the division this year. Won't I think they've me. got a chance. Absolutely won't shock me. Kurt Ferentz is one of the best coaches in the country. There's a reason he's been around for 20 years. Yeah. You, you don't. You don't. You're not mediocrity if you're doing that. So. Now you are you are correct. Minnesota Golden Gophers are next. <sighs> I like saying that. Okay. Minnesota Golden Gophers. Seven and six last year, three and six in the conference. Nine offensive starters returning. They got seven back on defense. Number twenty seven in the country in experience returning. Number three in the conference. Head coach PJ Fleck, twelve and thirteen in two years. He is 42 and 35 overall. That includes his time at Western Michigan, including the big time, what was it, 13 and 0 season, 14, whatever it was. That's right. Won three of their last four in 2018 and then won a bowl game. They are recruiting better than they have ever recruited at Minnesota. Uh, quarterback walk on Zach Amistad won the job in 2018. He went three and, uh, three and four, excuse me, before he got injured. 
And then Tanner Morgan came in and went four and two. Both are back for the number 86 total offense, and it is expected that Anikstad is going to win the job again. Now, he was a walk-on. Now, I listened to another podcast that said, if you have a walk-on quarterback that comes in in your first two years and wins your job, you're not doing something right. I think I could agree with that. Would Baker Mayfield... But um, that's that's the other side of this, right? Be the exception to the rule? I don't know. But at the same time, this guy went 3-4 and four before he got injured, and then the backup went 4-2. and two. So, who knows? Uh, new defense coordinator Joe Rossi, he got the job after Rob Smith's defense gave up 646 yards in a 55-31 to 31 loss to Illinois last year. Defensive uh, end, cor- uh, I can't talk, Carter Coffin is an absolute star. They need Notre Dame transfer Micah Du Treadway to be really good. They, they need him to be good. Improvement at quarterback and defense, along with a reasonable schedule, puts a division title actually within reach. I don't think they get there this year. I'm about to say, I'm thinking we're a little far off from the. Well, listen to this. Their over-under in Vegas is 7.5. The Ooh. over is minus 150. The under is plus 130. Ooh. I've got them hitting the over. I've got them at 8-4 and four this year. Okay. I got them 6-6. Six and six. I thought that was good. And that 6-6, six and six I think, would be you know right about par because they do have a lot of stuff that they need to continue building on. But yeah, but they're, they're, I want them going in the right direction. Let's continually make bowl games. Yeah, and then once you continually make bowl games, you take that next step to now we start competing for division championships and things of that nature. Their uh, their non conference schedule gets it gradually more difficult each time, but it's none of the games are no, crazy. Yeah, it's you start with South Dakota State, this who is they, uh, an FCS playoff team. Yep, and then at Fresno State, who That's has right. lost everybody, and so you're playing on the road against a team that has basically no returning experience. And then but you a, get Georgia but a Southern. really well coached team that we respect, though. Yeah, and then, and you, then you get Georgia Southern, Georgia another Southern back. And so yeah, really athletic team. And then of course you start at Purdue, but that's after a bye game. Now that's one that I do have them losing, but I've got them beating Illinois, Nebraska, Rutgers, and Maryland all in a row. Then right. I've got them losing to Penn State, losing at Iowa, losing at Northwestern. I've got them beating Wisconsin for the second year in a row at home. So my my philosophy was I think they're gonna win one of those four games. Yeah. But I also think they could easily lose one of those early games, too. Yeah. I mean, it's just the way college football is. No, I think uh, I think you're probably right. Probably right. Next up, whoo, we're going to have a lot of people watch this one. The Nebraska Cornhuskers. Maybe not long. Four and eight last year, three and six in conference. Returning starters, they got six on offense, five on defense. Experience returning is number 73 in the country, number six in the conference. Head coach Scott Frost, 23 and 15 in three years as a head coach, took UCF from the number 120 offensive efficiency team in 2016 to number six in 2017. That is coaching. That's what that is. Quarterback Adrian Martinez, 295.1 yards per game last year was a school record. He should improve even more under quarterback coach Mario Verd. I've read so many articles about this guy. Verduzco? Verduzco? I'll leave the names to you. Number 25 total offense last year. The number 94 total defense. This is where they need leaders like defensive tackle Darian Daniels and inside linebacker Muhammad Berry. Uh, he was their leading tackler. They need them to step up and hit a next level. Based on averages, their turnover margin should have been plus 3.7 last year, but was actually minus 5.7. That was the second most unlucky in the Big Ten. I think that kind of changes a little bit. Another year under strength coach Zach Duvall. uh, I think it'll have them even more prepared in 2019. I don't think they are quite there yet. This schedule is significantly more difficult than what UCF had to uh, handle in his second season there. Now, I think that they will continue to show improvement. I think that they start out 5-0, and and that means a win at home over Ohio State. Whew. So I think that they beat Ohio State, and then I think they lose the next two. I think they lose to Northwestern and at Minnesota. I'm really curious to see your Ohio State scores then. Yeah. Um, they beat Indiana. They lose at Purdue. 
They have a bye week. They beat Wisconsin. They beat Maryland. They lose at home to Iowa. I've got them eight and four, five and four in the conference. Got them seven and five. The, the one game off. Now, if you've got them at seven, you might mm-hmm. want to jump on this. Uh, the over under is eight and a half, and it's minus one ten on both sides. So Vegas is basically saying there's a lot of money coming in on this. We're just gonna keep it right here. Yep. See what y'all think. So you've got them at seven and five. Yes, sir. Kind of the same losses that I've got, including I guess uh, I just Ohio don't State. Don't have them beaten Ohio State. Yeah, that makes sense. Or I, guess, I think Scott Frost is a good coach. Yeah, and I think this program is going to be going in the right direction. They're they're going to get better. The downside is is I think there are a lot of good coaches in this conference. Yeah, I think Purdue used to be a punching bag, and they're not anymore. I think Minnesota was a punching bag. They're not anymore. Yeah, and as long as those guys are there. They're going to keep getting better too. The problem is, is they got about a two or three year head start on you. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. So you can't just chalk those games up to W's like you used to think. We're Nebraska and they're them. I don't. I don't. It, it doesn't work way. like that anymore. So next, the Northwestern Wildcats. Props to our buddies, he's, the West Lock Pirates. Our guys. Our Northwestern Wildcats. Believe that? Yeah, we'll we'll claim that now. That's right. So I understand that I'm wearing. The Stanford hat right now, but understand I am on your side currently. Nine and five last year, eight and one in the conference. Just think about that, by the way. Eight and one in the conference. That's insane, right? You only played three out of conference games. You got the Big Ten title game and lost that one. But eight and one in conference, nine and five. That means they lost to Akron last year. Lost to Akron and won the division. Lost to Akron. Just unbelievable. Returning starters, they got five on offense, five on defense. Experience returning number 101 in the country, number 12 in the conference. That is not good. The over-under is 6. Minus 125 to go over, plus 105 to go under. Pat Fitzgerald, 96-70 and 70 in 13 seasons. Can you believe he's been there 13 years? Yeah, he's been there for a long time, and I'm not worried about the lack of experience. They're not Alabama-Clemson, we don't rebuild, we just reload. But... They have depth on their team yeah. that's their guys that have been playing in this system for a while. They're not throwing a bunch of freshmen in there to start next year. No, you're right. Uh, they've got 36 wins since 2015. They've won three consecutive bowl games and their first ever division title that's right. in 2018. Now, this is what everything hinges on for me. Quarterback Hunter Johnson, five-star Clemson transfer, takes over for Clayton Thorson. He's got running back Isaiah Bowser to lean on. Bowser was an absolute surprise last year. And, and, and he, was, he was great. He was great all year. 6.24 yards per pass since 2015. This team has been the number 122 pass uh, yards per pass team in the country since 2015. That will absolutely have to change for my prediction to come true. I think Hunter Johnson brings that. Defensive end... Joe Gaziano and linebacker Patty Fisher lead the defense. Injury-riddled secondary in 2018 should be more experienced. That's the one good thing about having so many guys get hurt last year is so many guys got in on the action, right? Yeah, so they, they've got plenty of experience. Yeah, they, they they just weren't deemed starters. Right, and it, as far as experience, as far as production goes, no, they didn't get a ton of production in because they had to fill in in spots. That's but they right. all got game time. They all got to play. The number 100 scoring offense and the number 100 totally, uh, excuse me, number 108 total offense. They've got to improve for Northwestern to take the next step. I am of the belief that quarterback Hunter Johnson can do that. I've got him at 10 and 2 this year, 7 and 2 in the conference. The only losses I have are at Wisconsin and then at home against Iowa. The reason I say those two, right? I think that they beat Michigan State at home. The next week, lose at Wisconsin. I think Nebraska takes them lightly after Nebraska gets a win over Ohio. So then Northwestern goes and gets a win at Nebraska. They've got a bye week. Then you and I are planning on being there to watch them beat Ohio State. Friday night lights. It's going to be a great game. So then they beat Ohio State, but then the very next week after that, they've got Iowa Iowa coming in. I think Iowa can catch them there because they could get a little... 
too comfortable. And we like Iowa. Iowa's a really good team. We, yeah, Iowa's a good team. And then I think they win the remaining game. Like, listen to the back half of the schedule. At Indiana, Purdue, UMass, Minnesota, at Illinois. That's right. The The only thing they have to worry about towards the back half of the schedule is the big head. Yeah. And if they've played that well and everything's clicking. So I originally had them 9-3. and three. And we talked about this right before the pod started because these are our guys, and I asked you. And when you said you went double digits, I got to go double digits. There it is. I'm with you. There I'm, it I'm, is. You, you sold me. These are our guys. We love these dudes. And they're really good. They're, Pat Fitzgerald's a really good coach. Yes. I don't know if anybody knows this or not, but this is Northwestern. For some reason, we give Vanderbilt – a ton of credit for being a smart kid school when they do well. And we also give Stanford a ton of credit for being nationally ranked and a smart kid school when they're playing really well. Yeah. I feel like Northwestern kind of slips through, and I don't know why, because 80% of the sports media world graduated from Northwestern. <laughs> but but anyway, I really like this team. Yeah. I think they got a lot of dudes coming back. That, that that had plenty of playing time last year. They're not going to be underclassmen. They're going to be older guys. Yeah. I think the schedule works out well. I, I think the schedule is Here, here's the thing. wonderful. They're going to run up against a couple of really good teams. But when they do and how they do, I think, are perfect setups. Michigan State's probably one of the best defenses in the country, if not the best defense in the country this year. But they've got Michigan State – Coming off UNLV, you got basically two weeks to prepare for Michigan State, and Michigan State stops the run. I think they're versatile enough to throw the ball and attack them. It's what they've done the last couple of years. Michigan yeah. State's had a really good defense, and they attack them in the air. Well, I believe that they've uh, – haven't they won three straight against Michigan State? Yeah, and, yeah. and then, and they and then the same thing. They got the bye week before Ohio State, and it's one of those midweek games. You know how these home teams in the midweek games – always seem to find a way to win out right oh yeah no one ever predicts it but it's just where it happens we're all in on that those are those are big wins against big programs now they open up against stanford on the road uh i just like this team more than stanford i was just about to say that doesn't scare me but i've been honest about my feelings on stanford for a while I, i don't know that they're great i think they're really good i don't know that they're great they don't scare me at all i can not that stanford can't win that game they just don't scare me. So we both got them at ten and two, whew, and that which is nuts because the over under is six. Six. So I'm probably going to be betting that one. Oh yes. Whenever we do our video here in a couple of weeks on our favorite uh, regular season win totals, that'll probably be in there. Next up, we got two more. The Purdue Boilermakers, six and seven in 2018, five and four in the conference. Returning starters, they got four on offense, nine on defense. Experience-wise, number 126 in the country. That is fourth from last. Is that right? Fourth? Yeah. Yeah, if it's 126, yes. Number 14 in the conference. Jeff Brom, 13 and 13 in two years. Turned down Louisville, signed a seven-year, $36.8 million contract to stay at Purdue. So glad he stayed. Yeah, I think it makes, uh, I think it makes college football better. He's building yeah. something at a school that you just don't expect to be a football school. Well, it's you know since Tiller was there, really. Yeah, I mean, it's like been it, a- I mean, remember they had like Drew Brees and, and all this That's different right. stuff. They they had the high flying offense going. Purdue used to make bowl games regularly. I think I think things are better. Like life just feels better whenever they're actually pretty good. That's right? right. So they've got the number twenty nine total offense returning, number eleven passing offense, but they lose quarterback David Blau. They return quarterback Elijah Sindelar, and more importantly, wide receiver Rondell Moore. That's I was just about to say. Uh, he had two thousand two hundred and fifteen <laughs> all purpose yards Ooh. last year. Was an All American. That a lot. That seems like that a lot. That seems like a lot. That's a <laughs> that's a lot like of a miles. Lot. Number one hundred thirteen total defense. Number one twenty eight passing defense. So that is quite the disparity or dis. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just division between offense and defense. Yeah, whatever. Right? Uh, yeah. There's a disparity there. How's that? Front sure. seven should be a strength after lacking last season. Defensive end, uh, George Kalaftis, number 71, I think, player in the country in the last recruiting cycle. He decided to stay home. He's a top 75 recruit. Um, but him actually coming in 
to this team. Getting like, this the top a, 100 kid to this come is to a Purdue. top 25 recruiting class for this, yeah. this bunch. Uh, the first two years, they relied a lot on experienced upperclassmen. They are it, Here's the deal with this team, right? And it's still the same right now as it was a couple of years ago. They are talented enough at the top to be able to hang with just about anybody, and they are not deep enough to avoid slip-ups. That's it. Right. Um, I think... They will beat teams they should not beat, like yeah. when they beat the hell out of Ohio, Ohio State. State. But then they will turn around and they will lose to an Indiana or something of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's kind of what I see happening this season. I've got Purdue at six and six. I think next year, like once they've got more experience, more maybe more, another recruiting class. Yeah, this recruiting another recruiting class, class. Gets a year older. Yeah. yeah. Uh, once we get another one like that, then I think you really see it start to kick up to eight wins a year, something like that. But I, I think Brom scares the absolute crap out of everybody. He should. Uh, I've got him at six and six this year. I've got him seven and five. Got them a game better. I I like this team. I like the direction they're going in. And I was ecstatic when he decided to stay. Yeah. Because the Big Ten is a lot of fun. One of the reasons the Big Ten is being left out of the championship every year, the playoff the last couple of years, is because they kind of cannibalize themselves. Yeah. It, it is a it is a deep, tough conference. They've proven that in bowl seasons the last couple of years. And, and I think, like I said... There were these cupcake teams for a while that are just getting better. Yeah, I agree. So six and six, they're over under. By the way, is seven and it's minus one ten on both sides. So six and six, seven and Ooh. five. You know, so you'd have to hit eight wins to win it. Yeah, and I, I don't see that happening. That's a little steep. So I, I think I'd love playing, to see it though. It wouldn't hurt my feelings if I saw that. I think playing the under there would probably be the smartest way. And we'll close up. We got about three minutes to finish this one. The Wisconsin Badgers. Absolutely love this. Uh, eight and five last year, five and four. Returning starters, they've only got three on offense, five on defense. As far as returning experience goes, number 95 in the country, number 10 in the conference. Over under is eight. Now, the over is even, plus 100. The under is minus 120. So they figure it'll be around eight. Head coach Paul Christie, he was 36 and seven at Wisconsin before the BYU game last year. He's now 42 and 12 in four years. That's still a pretty dang good record. I was just about to say. Uh, they absolutely shit. walloped Miami in the bowl game. Yep. When, you know, it, it, we didn't realize it at the time, but I mean, Mark, Mark Rick was. last game. Yeah. I mean, just destroyed them. Running back, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, right? <laughs> Jonathan Taylor football. Uh, 2,194 yards, 16 touchdowns as a sophomore. He is a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. They lose quarterback Alex Hornibrook, but Chris will be the first one to tell you that quarterback inefficiency was the reason that they were ninth in the Big Ten in pass efficiency last year. Like Hornibrook was not that good. So quarterback Jack Cohn has the inside track to the job, but the fan base is absolutely buzzing about blue chipper Graham Mertz. Linebacker Chris Orr expected to be a leader on defense, but the star of the defense is outside linebacker Zach Bond. They gave up 4.4 yards per play in 2017, and then that expounded or expanded or exploded, if you'd like to say, to 5.5 in 2018. That was the 11th worst in FBS. Yeah. They used like, to be a team where they ran the ball and they stopped the run. And, and they, they couldn't do it last, last year. year they, they still ran. Yeah, but they couldn't stop it. But when when people understood that, hey, this team cannot throw the football, they were able to get some stops. Yep. And, you know, when they couldn't stop teams on defense, there was nowhere to go. That's right. I think that they improve ever so slightly this year. Now, they went 7-5 and five last year, and it was like a disaster because, I mean, they were a top-five team. They were expected to compete for the college football playoff last I know, year. I had, I had them in there. And instead, they finished seven and five in the regular season, and then they win the bowl game to get to eight wins. I think they get to eight wins in the regular season this year. The over under, like I said, is eight. I've got them dead on the number. I've got them eight and four, five and four in the conference. Uh, what say you? I got them eight and four, and it won't surprise me if they finish with nine and three. The four losses I have are all in conference. They're all against big teams. But but if they were able to beat those teams, because they're going to show up for all four of those games. Would it surprise you if they went seven and five? Yes, that really? would shock me. Yeah, 
I think so. So you're telling me if the if the quarterback position cannot get solidified, you think mm. it would surprise you? Maybe not. Now I'm looking at the games that I gave him wins for. Yeah, he. This might be the toughest schedule in the conference. It's it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, this like, this is the toughest schedule in the conference. I've my four losses that I gave them. Their, their are, conference schedule is. Is brutal. It, yeah, it, yeah. They play all of the best teams. I've I've got them losing. Penn State's off of there. Yeah, yeah. I said that. All the best teams. I've got them losing to Michigan, at Ohio State, at Nebraska, and at Minnesota. Right. Those are my four losses. Now the wins that I gave them: Northwestern, Michigan State, Iowa, Purdue, and, and then of course we. I think we both gave them at USF, but yeah. I don't think any of those would really surprise us. No, it, it's it's gonna be brutal. They've they've got five, six, seven, seven conference games, eight conference games that could go either way. I mean, really, you could all all their conference games except for Illinois are against the upper echelon of this conference. Yeah, I agree. It's a, I, it's I a tough schedule. Four. You you <laughs> might be right. They they could easily go seven and five. That's I've got them eight and four as well. I think that's probably why Vegas has the over under sitting at eight. Ah, what a what a crazy, crazy division. So that is the Big Ten West. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go over to tunicatravel.com. Northwestern taking it down again. <laughs> Back-to-back division <laughs> champs. We will be back with the Big Ten East. That's not the right one. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe. Or your favorite podcast app, visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.